Welcome to Oxford, arguably the most famous university town in the world. Oxford is dominated by its colleges, some of which date back as far as the 12th century. This city of Spires has provided a home for some of the world's most prominent artists, politicians, scientists and philosophers, from Oscar Wilde to Bill Clinton. A popular tourist destination, it attracts five million visitors a year. And an easy commute to London has also tempted many to move into the Oxfordshire countryside, making its surrounding villages very popular with home buyers. Stella and Adrian live in Longworth, a village 20 minutes from Oxford. They met nine months ago through an online dating agency. Now they're engaged and looking for their dream home. She's a jewellery designer and he's a games designer. This is going to be the first house we buy together. Um, and because we're in somewhere so, so nice at the moment, we're, we're going to be expecting a lot from it. It's, it's got to be almost perfect. The kind of place we're looking for is much like the place where we are now, which is rented and unfortunately we can't buy it. Spacious, light and airy, something in a rural location. Now they're both tall, over six foot, and their new place needs to be big enough for them and Adrian's pride and joy. The cinema. What I have got is a ridiculously large TV, very large speakers, and a new home will need somewhere to house this uh, ridiculous collection, really. He is not kidding. The screen and the speakers are over 10 foot wide and 3 foot deep. So, what does Stella think of Adrian's obsession? Oh my god, he's a bachelor, he's been a bachelor for a long time and he's been spending his money on boys' toys. Time to put our professional home-finding skills into practice. Their budget is £350,000, but they could go to £400,000 for the perfect place. Sounds a lot, but prices in Oxfordshire are steep, so not necessarily an easy brief. Our first property is in an exclusive estate 15 miles from Oxford. With 20 acres of private parkland shared between the 12 owners, this house is a converted stable. It's on at a guide price of £325,000 to £350,000. The entrance hall is big enough to house an office, and on the first floor there's a good-sized open-plan kitchen and living room. And there's one thing here they certainly won't have a problem with. You wanted ceiling height. Yeah. We found your ceiling height. I think you did. First things, it's not my taste. Lick of paint. How does it work for you as a living room? It's just one room with everything in it. So you've got your kitchen, your dining and living room. The kitchen we passed doesn't exactly uh, do the room any favours. And... It feels like mm. a flat. It feels, doesn't feel like a house, like a three-storey house. It feels like virtually everything is on this floor. Well, if this is a flat, it's a pretty big one. The top floor of the house has two good-sized bedrooms and bearing in mind our tricky brief, Phil has a great plan. Now, with the obvious drawback of... Uh, Losing your second bedroom, we wondered whether your television screen could go up against this wall and this room could be the cinema. Seats With up the back. sort of elevated seating area. Yeah. I can't say I'm wild about the split level thing. This room's not big enough, is it, though? Um, so that leaves us... Yeah. Flogging a dead In the wrong house. house. Indeed. <laughs> Possibly would like more than one bedroom, of yeah. course. Come on. <laughs> Stella and Adrian loved the location with its rural setting, but the house felt a bit too much like a flat for them. Hopefully they won't feel the same way about our next house. Situated in the popular village of Long Hanborough, 15 miles out of Oxford city centre, our next property was formerly a manse. The house is on a busy road and this is reflected in its asking price of £290,000, which is well within our budget. The house is entered via a charming walled garden, which has its own secret history. This courtyard area was actually a Sunday school attached to the building, but the roof went and so they decided to knock it down and it creates this sort of courtyard garden. But the fact there was a, a room here does beg the question, could there be a room here again one day? Yeah. I'm sure if we put windows back in the, in the wall it would... Uh... Make it even quieter? Yeah, maybe. These um, archways would have been stained glass. Yes. So the Sunday school in here could have gone and through the arched window. <laughs> <laughs> the ground floor has a large kitchen with views out onto the garden. Original wood flooring from the turn of the century runs through the dining room, study and a downstairs bathroom. The biggest space is the gorgeous sitting room at the front of the house with French windows leading out onto that courtyard. We wondered whether this would flat, straight wall 
I think that, take the screen. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's there's plenty of space there, and uh, there's room at the back for surround speakers too. Mm -hmm. And unlike our current place, uh, we'd be able to use the fireplace too. Mm. It's quite open up here, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite nice and light. Got loads of rooms. There's a generosity of space all round. Ceiling height doesn't pose a problem here. With four large bedrooms, the house would make a good long-term family home. Great first impressions, but let's delve a little deeper. There, there is a patch of damp up in the corner, right? what used to be damp. I wouldn't want you to worry about it because that's completely dry now. The problem has obviously been solved. So just a lick of paint and uh, Simple death nothing death. to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Some people are pathological about road noise. Others can learn to live with it. If you're sent the details for a house that's near a road, go and check it out. You never know what the noise levels are going to be like until you're actually in the house. You still hear the road, can't you? Yeah. The main road at the front could be a problem, but is the space inside the house enough to win them over? There's a lot of space in there. It's got a lot of character. Um, but I think it would just be such a compromise with the location on the road. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really rural, which is what we were looking for. Well, luckily for us, our next choice is as rural as it gets. 40 minutes from Oxford, we're in the sleepy village of Adderbury. It's a modern house, but they've used local hort and stone to give it that older look, and it's on the market for £375,000. And just listen. Just the odd bird. Yeah, no cars. <laughs> no cars, yeah. Inside, the combination of rural and modern works well. The open plan entrance hall doubles as a dining area, leading to the fully fitted kitchen on one side and the spacious living room on the other. The thing about this room is that it's very, very light. If this was really a period stone cottage, the windows would be far smaller. So it's one of those benefits. Feels like, looks like a period cottage in many ways, but has the benefit of the modern bigger windows. I call it she she. It feels quite modern and quite sort of towny, yeah. doesn't feel rural and cottagey. What are your thoughts on the space? There's a fair amount, but I think the, the shapes, at least as far as the home cinema set up go, it's not good. No. Don't, no, it really, wouldn't work. don't no. really work. Stella looks quite relieved that the cinema won't fit, but they haven't seen upstairs yet. We like the space in this property, enough room to hide a lot of clutter. There's the storage space through there as well, so you haven't actually got to have too many wardrobes and bits and pieces in here. Yeah. It's another one of those features that just doesn't make it look rural, that kind of arch looks really modern and... Uh, it's very practical, of... though. Yeah. Just something that we did notice in this room is that the carpet has come second to the wardrobe. Right. <laughs> yeah. The wardrobe is not fitted. The carpet's been laid around it, and whoever buys this house is likely to find a great big hole in the carpet. The rain provided the ideal opportunity to test out the garden furniture and take a good look at the exterior. Well, it's a bit of a strange addition, I think, to the house. Something you might find on top of a penthouse or something <laughs> like that, yeah. That said, I think it's something a problem that could be solved. This stone is local, you could get more of it, and, you know, you could build it up around and have a proper dormer window or something. Avoiding the shower outside has thrown up another issue with this house for Stella. But what about the shower inside? I imagine you've come across quite a few problems finding showers that you will fit in, haven't you? Yes, uh, I guess about 50% just... Uh... Yeah, There's essentially uh, six shower heads in here, so... Yeah, quite like that shower, yeah. Probably the best feature of the house. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> Do you shower together often? Not often. You would. I think you would if you came in here. <laughs> oh, Phil. Again, I think we're suffering with the, uh, the sizes and the angles of rooms, aren't we? Yeah, it's a bit awkward in places. Oh. <laughs> Come rain or shine, it's worth really examining the outside of your potential purchase. We've just noticed something very irregular here. This is the damp-proof course that stops moisture rising up the wall. This is moist soil above the line of the damp-proof course. Not good news. Now, the wall may have been tanked, but I'd be asking my solicitor and my surveyor to confirm that. We've come to the end of day one, and so far we've had a pretty mixed bag. The first house we went to see, though we thought it was roomy, they felt it was like a flat. Next, the church house certainly had character. I think it would just be such a compromise with the location on the road. 
Then finally to Adderbury, perfect setting, but they thought it was too shishi. 